Welcome to Single Crystal 5. In this tutorial we're going to build the shape of alpha quartz in its right-handed form. We'll investigate symmetry relationships, colouring the faces automatically, and how to get information on their relative sizes, distances and surface areas. I will also compare the resulting display with a stereographic projection in two dimensions. We'll start off with a new document and we're going to add the chord structure from our built-in structures library. Let's search for quartz in the library and I'm going to choose the alpha chord structure. We're now going to create a 3D crystal shape by changing the simulation mode. So we're going to go to the shape inspector and set a few things up before we start editing faces. Let's take a look at the colouring. I'm going to colour by stereogram pole. I'm going to make my faces opaque. I can change the saturation. We're going to have unsaturated or fully saturated. Let's go for something in between. And we can also label our faces. Let's make the labels nice and big so we can see what we're doing. Now Quartz has two main sets of faces set parallel to 100 and a set parallel to 101 and we'll add these and their symmetry relationships. To do that we need to go to the faces inspector and here you can see we have a default set of faces displayed and these aren't the ones that we want we are going to edit those. Before we do that Quartz is trigonal in this case or hexagonal high temperatures so we're going to just change these three index displays to four index and we do that by specifying that we want to use Miller Bravais indices. Now we can group faces by symmetry by clicking the little, little folder toggle here and we want to get rid of the 001 because that's not found in natural crystals. Now we have no face display because we don't have a closed shape. We can click the little plus button here and we'll add a new face and this has to be parallel to 1, O, O. You'll notice that this I index here is automatically generated for us. This is a redundant index but it's used in hexagonal and trigonal systems. We want a plane normal and we want to add the symmetry related planes. Now we also want 101. And now we've got two sets of faces and we can set some colors for them. Let's go for something relatively civilized, cyan, and let's have a green. So here's a stubby crystal. We haven't edited the positions of the faces yet, but this is the start. Now if we expand these groups, you can see that these are the individual planes that are related by symmetry. And individual planes have these curved brackets. The rows, the group rows, have these squiggly brackets. This is a crystallographic convention. Squiggly brackets means a crystal form, that is a set of faces related by symmetry. And we've got the group by symmetry option down here. We can toggle that on or off. Now if you can work with individual faces, you can change their colours. Let's see how they're displayed. You can turn the labels on or off if you want to and um, 
generally edit the structure, but we want all of the faces to be related by symmetry. And there is a special button down here called Symmetrize. If we click that, then we get a consistent arrangement for all faces that are related by symmetry. The next thing we need to do is to set the relative sizes of these faces. And we do this by specifying their distance to the centre of the crystal. And this is sometimes referred to as a wolf construction, but there's really nothing clever about it. The distance of the plane to the centre of the crystal defines its relative size, and that has some relationship to the stability of the face. So let's have a look at the 100 group of faces. And let's take one of these faces. Let's take this one here and let's change the distance of this face. Let's move it closer to the center of the crystal. And you can see it gets bigger, further away, and it gets smaller. And again, we can reset that. Now for these 100 faces, the distance can be set precisely by typing in a value and it should actually be 0.756. Notice that these are now the prism faces of our crystal. And in our three dimensional model, we've got our X, Y, and Z crystallographic axes shown. If I double click, then we can rotate the crystal. Now, it turns out that quartz crystals typically have some other faces as well, and we're going to add those. So let's add a new face, and I'm going to add a face parallel to 5, 1, bar 6, 1, and the symmetry relations. There it is. Let's choose a color for that. Now we're going to choose another face. And this face is going to be parallel to 1, 1, bar 2, 1. Now we need to set some sizes. I'm going to choose 1 for that one, and I'm going to choose 0.847. And now we've got our faces visible. Let's choose a pink color for the 111 face. Notice that we can turn off sets of faces by clicking their visibility checkboxes. And you could also toggle the labeling on and off by clicking the label checkboxes. I think we'll make those labels a little bit smaller. There we go. Now you may notice that in the top right hand corner of this window, we have this mini stereogram. And this is a two dimensional projection of our face normals. Now we can zoom this up and see a larger stereogram. We now have our stereogram inspector on the right hand side. I'm going to turn off the stereo net and I'm going to turn off the south projections as well. Let's look down the crystal Z axis. Let's make the stereogram a bit clearer. We'll increase the font size here. Let's go back to our shape and we're going to turn off the axial vectors and we're going to go to our faces our labels and we're going to turn on the face normals so that we can compare these with what we're seeing on the stereogram on the right hand side so if i just zoom up here and uh, we can slowly rotate and you can see 
how these normals like this O bar 111 relates to the stereographic projection here and here and here. These are also normals that are drawn for the crystal shape. Now let's set the view direction explicitly now to the A axis. And here's our now our view. If I double click, then we can rotate the crystal about its Z axis and you can see the stereogram rotate. And let's turn off those face normals for the moment. Now we're going to minimize our stereogram. There's the mini stereogram and I'm going to just hide that. We're now going to make some measurements on the crystal. To do this, we need to make sure we got our arrow tool is active. And first of all, if I hover over a face, we get a face tip that appears, which we can expand. And that gives us information about that face. We have the number of vertices. We have the distance of the face uh, to the centroid of the crystal. We have the surface area, the perimeter, and then we've got some basic morphological data, the number of 24, um, number of faces that the shape has, the uh, number of vertices that the shape has, and the number of edges. And then we've got um, the overall surface area and the overall volume. Now you'll notice that when you hover over a face, the vertices are highlighted, and that allows us to measure them. So if I click on a vertex, I can select it. And if I shift click, I can select a second vertex and show the distance between those two vertices. If I click on a third vertex, then we get another distance and we get the angle, the included angle between the vertices. We can do something similar for faces. Let's click on a face to select it and let's shift click on a second face and both faces are now highlighted and we have the interfacial angle shown. Let's just do that again. There is our interfacial angle. Single Crystal's gallery window includes a set of crystal shape models, including one with mirror images of quartz, left and right forms. Because Single Crystal is a multi-pattern, multi-structure program, you can easily have multiple models in the same document, which is a great way for understanding chiral relationships, such as this one, as well as twinning relationships. You use the patterns or structures in the document sidebar to control the visibility. In this short tutorial, we built a crystal of right-handed quartz, edited its morphology and colours, annotated it, compared it with its stereographic projection, and made some measurements.